What is good, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the K Reviews Podcast. To my right, we have returning once again, Lucas. We're going to be talking about Integrated Tech Solutions by Aesop Rock. Yes. Um, great album. Phenomenal album. Um, I guess to get started, Aesop dropped the album in 2020, mm-hmm. but uh, both of us kind of skipped over it. Even though we're both Aesop fans, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know how, but we didn't skip over this one. And um, I think I would say off rip that this is like already one of my favorite albums from him. Yeah. Oh um, my gosh, it's such, it's so well crafted, and like so spot on. Um, he's really come into like who he is. I think. I think so too. I yeah. think he's found the perfect balance between like. Um, ex- extremely complex lyricism, but still like goofy song topics. Yeah, he does. He does find a good way to sprinkle in like just regular stuff. Yeah, in plain ear. Yeah, which is nice. It is nice that, and that's something that um wasn't as like present early mm-hmm. in his discography. I feel like, mm-hmm. like I feel like on things like Labor Days and Float, um, there wasn't. There wasn't so much that was accessible to, like, the average year. No. And I feel like on these recent projects, he's definitely, especially with, like, this one and The Impossible Kid, he's definitely made, like, something that's a little bit more accessible to the average person while still is great and um, satisfies, like, his hardcore fans at the same time. Yeah, it's still artistic. It's still um, really complex and like mm-hmm. the way he makes it and he stays true to himself. What do you is ITS just like supposed to be like a fake company that like what did you what did you think ITS was? Oh, that's interesting. I thought it was a real company. I know there is an ITS. It's not Integrated Tech Solutions. It's like something else. Okay. But it's it's a logistics company. I know that. Okay, interesting. Um so that's that's funny. I don't know. I wonder if he made up this this name for something, or I thought it was in reference to something else, because the intro is like some eighties, you know, commercial infomercial, yeah, yeah about a company. Um, it reminds me of Have you seen? Uh, I think it's a Wesley Snipes movie. They're they're working at te- as telemarketers. Mm-hmm. Well, at the end of it. <clears throat> Or uh, throughout the movie, they have, like, this company yeah. that you can come work for, and you will live at the company, and then they'll just, they'll give you everything. Like, they'll feed you, they'll, they're not going to pay you, but they're going to feed you, they're going to give you a place to live for you and your family okay. um, at the company, and then you just wake up, you go to work. Uh, it's super, like, futuristic. Yeah, I... I didn't realize that there was a real company called ITS. Um, mm-hmm. I know it's not Integrated Tech Solutions, but I initially just kind of took it as like a made-up company that um, that Aesop invented, like in order to represent just like this idea or this ideology <clears throat> that like humans need to continue to move forward and expand technology, um, regardless of like what consequences might come from it. Because mm-hmm. I think that's what he's getting at, especially in Mindful Solutionism, like the Mm -hmm. first song um so i just took it as like this is a representation of like modern companies that just like look to technologically advance um without boundaries i guess yeah so i just look at i I just looked at it as like a as a made-up thing for me so yeah it's super interesting concept if you think about what's happening now with like ai yeah exactly just technology in general it's like where does it end where does it begin really does it begin here yeah. if it begins here like what a crazy you know future is in store yeah like, uh, <laughs> like and for him to predict it like right now that like years from now yeah if we see the downfall of civilization yeah happened this we're gonna look at Aesop Rock. yeah we're gonna look at Aesop Rock. <laughs> he knew <laughs> yeah yeah. Aesop Rock and all the other scientists telling us that we're going to die in 12 years <laughs> yeah, or yeah. however long it is this time. Yeah. But but yeah, man, I guess we can take that right into Mindful Solutionism. Um, what were your thoughts? And we were kind of already getting into it, but like, what were your thoughts in general about, about that track? Um, 
it was great. This is, and this is one of those tracks again. It was like he's he's really grown into like giving us a f- fully well thought out concept. Um, in his in his like word salad that he does, but still having it make sense, which is nice because obviously like. I mean, and it, what he talks about in it too is super. It's it just gets darker yeah. as the verse goes on. Um, but other than that, like he did such a good job, like with the way he he performed it yeah. and stuff. Um, and it goes with all the songs on here. Like uh, in terms of his skill, he's really come into himself i think as well yeah 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 i think so too i think he's rapping has just kind of become second nature to him it's Mm -hmm. like putting words together is just kind of easy at this point yeah so yeah i feel like i love his ability to like take just like one topic and stretch it into a three four minute song Mm -hmm. um and like in particular he does a really good job with like that on like pigeonometry and hundred feet tall like later on the album, yeah. Um, but mindful solutionism is like another example of him taking the idea of like what the advancement of technology could do, and like stretching that into like a full song where he doesn't even necessarily give fully like his own perspective on it. He just kind of lays out possibilities and like lets you mm-hmm. let you determine for yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I like the line. What was it? You could get a robot arm robot for your blown limb, off for your limb blown off limb yeah um that's just really funny imagery i think it is yeah you could get a robot, robot limb for your blown off limb yeah and it could and it kind of like that it kind of embodies the name of the songs mindful solutionism like we have the problem and the problem is like someone doesn't like our way of life yeah here in america or you know not so much that they don't like it but our government deems that we don't like them mm-hmm. for not having you know our way of life and so it just plays into like the whole military and um, the or the militaristic ways of our country really yeah um it's like that's okay that we sent you know you sons off to war we're gonna give them a new yeah arm. we're gonna give them a robot <laughs> arm like yeah. this is what it's cool yeah it's, it's all the, good they'll be faster it, there's <laughs> always solutions yeah to problems that we make up exactly yeah yeah so yeah and every solution is going to create more problems in which we're going to then find more solutions for it. yeah and yeah yeah it, it is an interesting concept so one of my personal favorites um was aggressive steven yeah um, and that was one of the more like surface level ones. Like that was one of the ones that came across very easy just because he is telling like a story. So it's very straightforward. Yeah. Um, but it was one of my favorites because I thought the story was told like extremely well and extremely vividly. Like I could see everything he was saying, which I think is a testament to like, he's a very talented, um, artist as well, like drawing wise. Yeah. And so I think that's why his rhymes are so vivid because he's literally just painting with his words. Like he's just he has a picture in his mind and he's, that's interesting. He's transferring what he would normally put on a pen and paper into how can I describe this with words? Yeah. And, um, yeah, he's always super detailed and vivid in his stories. Like even when he's explaining, like when they go into the apartment and he's explaining what his loft looks like, like you can picture his whole loft and everything and the way he describes it. And like, yeah. Yeah. So, and even like the tenseness of the situation too. Exactly. Of like, you know, there's some random person in inside his house. Yeah. And he's freaking out, but he's trying to say, stay strong for her friend. Yeah. But his friend just freaks out. Yeah. <laughs> and pretty funny. It's pretty great. And it, it has that humor to it too. Where like the hook is them yelling at him, get the fuck down, get out. Yeah. It's like that, that shit's pretty funny too. Yeah. And I love the way he wraps it up because I mean, with Aesop, there's always going to be at least a little bit of meeting, even in the goofy shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, this is an extremely goofy song, but by the end, when the police officer is asking him, like, do you want to be the victim and everything, and he's like, no, like, this man, he doesn't need prison, he needs, like, help, like, yeah, and, um, 
And uh, yeah, and like he's questioning the system. Yeah, and but then but then the cop says to him like, "Oh, well, there's there's systems in place, but none of them work. Yeah. It's either that or send them back to the dirt or whatever." Yeah. And then Aesop's like, "That's the bleakest shit I ever heard." <laughs> yeah. He's like, "I don't even have the words." Yeah. Like his, that's, his delivery there is really funny. Yeah, I I love it. Um, so that's like one of my favorite moments on the album. Uh, is that song just? Mm-hmm. I love the way that whole story unfolds. Yeah, yeah, the way it ends is is great too. And I like what you said about it. like he. Always, there's always meaning in his songs. Like it's never face value. Even the face value songs. Yeah. Are never face value. Yeah. Um. Nice. Uh, I think my favorite was Salt and Pepper Squid. That shit goes hard. Yeah. I just I really like his delivery. Me too. I I love his hook on that one. Which that's something I notice about this album is like his hooks are really good on this album, mm-hmm. and that's something that you couldn't like. I think Aesop, Aesop has always had good hooks, but um, it wasn't, like, always his strong suit. Mm-hmm. I felt like on this album, like, these are hooks that, like, the average person would hear and, and, and enjoy. So, like... Yeah, or you couldn't always tell, like, what his song structure was. Mm-hmm. And he, here he did, like... More like traditional. He, yeah, like, he made it more noticeable. Definitely. What the strong song structure was. But. Definitely. Even notice with, like, the mixing, with the way he mixed the chorus... Mm-hmm. He would put like a chorus filter like on the hooks versus the verses, yeah, and like, yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, I I really liked his delivery. He was just so smooth and like every word he enunciated it, and ah, uh, it was such a good song. I couldn't really tell you what it was about. I don't I don't remember the last time I listened to it. I don't remember it. Really quick, I do want to say that one line, that line right there where you say the homies get to show for the only rapper with no car. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, I, I I like the line too. I just read it. I'm here to see a friend jump off a bridge because his friend did. To us, that's what a friend is. What, what a, terrible a terrible question. question. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that line too. So okay, okay. So I remember I I did read a genius, um, a short genius description on this song. So he was saying that um, he had just gotten back surgery oh. and he couldn't skate around, but he was going around filming skate videos with like like other friends that he had, uh-huh. and so like. This part here, like, recline it way back to take the pressure off the stitches. He's talking about, like, his back surgery. And he says, that makes sense. they gave me 90 oxys, of which zero were of interest. Chewing shrooms at the waterfront and coveralls from the Olympics. Limping. I like to help the younger rippers clip up. A little hype to reignite the Nimbus when they hiccup. So those, that's, that's skate slang right there. The hiccup being the ollie and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, this song is just about him going around and watching, like, young skaters why it's called salt and pepper squid and why that ends up being the hook i don't know yeah that's the thing man it's like i'm not gonna pretend to know what every song means because i don't i don't yeah and (laughs) and and aesop is one of those artists where like i've been listening to like these three albums Mm -hmm. behind us for years and there's still songs on them where i'm like what the fuck are you talking exactly (laughs) like impossible kid i think i've got figured out but like Uh none shall pass and labor days i'm still like i don't know what the fuck he's talking about yeah and um, so I, I think that's a normal thing with Aesop. I think that's going to be the case. But I do really like the Salt and Peppa um, sample that mm-hmm. plays on the hook. Salt and Peppa's squid. here. Yeah. Because, I, and, and like how you keep saying squid, it sounds like she's saying squid even though she's saying here. Yeah. And so I love when samples are like that. Like I love when. You don't really know what's what they're saying. Yeah. and Or it sounds like they're saying something else related to the song that you're currently listening to. Yeah. Interesting. So squid must be like a skating term then. It could be. Um, yeah, it could be. I don't know. The stuntmen all get perfect tens, eleven if you hit the pole. Bonus for the sticks and stones. The, the kid, kid ain't fixing shit in post. Yeah, so he was talking about making skate yeah. videos with him. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I was completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's still a great song. Yeah, dude. I mean... It goes hard. It Just re- the delivery. And I like the, the, uh, because the hook is pretty, like, transparent. Yeah. I mean, not at all, but you can, it gives, like, a sense of what is going on. Salt and pepper squid. Like, it's a food type item. And I like how that transfers into the next song. Time moves differently here. Yeah, the drive through. Yeah. So it's like it's like high end food versus <clears throat> yeah. versus fast food. Yeah, just shitty like. Which plays into the whole technology stuff. thing, also. Yeah, I think that time moves differently here. It's kind of like uh, that's kind of like 
uh, one of the good things that come out of technology that, you know, he appreciates or one of his maybe like, uh, um, his guilty pleasures yeah, about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's great. It's just the whole song is just about food. <laughs> yeah, it's literally just him ordering in the drive thru and he even has like the sample of the yeah. of the guy literally talking to him like yeah. through the drive thru speaker. But even when you think about like how, how like you were just saying, like how it ties into the greater concept of the album, like even the simple stuff for Ace, like there's still a way to think about it in context with everything else that adds to it. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, like he's he's uh wrapping off his order and stuff and about all this food. But it's also just like a kind of the idea that us as Americans have so many options and it's, we have so much to stuff ourselves with. It's like, it's overwhelming. Yeah. And it's not always a good thing of like, you know, you can get whatever you want all the time. Exactly. Because you can, you can uh, overindulge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a good word for it. He's, he's basically overindulging the yeah. song with... He orders everything on the yeah, fucking menu. <laughs> <on> the menu. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the part where he says, add a pie, give yourself <clears throat> to the dark side. Because, yeah. like you said, guilty pleasure. Like, it's something that he knows is wrong, but mm. he just can't help himself. Like, it's so easily accessible to him. Like, why yeah. would he not? Yeah. And he does, uh, he does this in like another song. I'm pretty sure, a uh, hundred feet tall. Yeah, so that's the Mr. T track. That's another one of my favorites. Um, I love everything about that track because, again, the way he tells the story, it's like I see everything he's saying. Mm-hmm. There's the humor to it. I love the way the hook plays in. Yeah. To the because it's the hook is just Mr. T's slogans. Yeah. <laughs> no fools no suckers yeah be good to your mother and i it's it's goofy in the way that like only asap asap can pull off and have it be like still like, hard yeah have <laughs> it have it have me still want to listen to it all the yeah, time he's talking like, about him as a child being seven or eight yeah, and in, meeting engulfed. mr t yeah yeah he's a childhood hero and even just like the way With he his family you know his family going out to eat like that's not really a hard thing to rap about Dude, the opening lines of one time I met Mr. T in New York in the 80s. I was seven, eight-ish waiting for a table at Carnegie with my family who did not always agree on what was wavy but would shut up once a week because we loved our fucking A-team. I yeah. love I love the way he opens that shit. Like, he describes our family didn't bond over much, but we bonded over fucking A-team, so seeing Mr. T is a big fucking deal to us. <laughs> yeah. Like, he just paints this picture that this is, like, a huge moment for them, even though it's such a mundane or, like, goofy thing yeah. from the outside. Um, I like in the middle when he um, he explains where he was. It, uh, when he says it takes a place like this to fill Mr. T up. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you who don't know the establishment... They're famous in Manhattan for serving gigantic, gigantic sandwiches. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Because I didn't know Carnegie was famous for that. So the fact that he hear, includes yeah. that in there, like, explains that line. Yeah. Yeah. He really lets everyone in on on what's going on. I also love the way that he ends it. He says, he kept it brief and said his piece, and with that, disappeared in a cloud, mystique obscenely intact. He played it perfect to a nervous kid. He met at his peak. We spent the meal like, holy Moses, we just met Mr. T. So I love how he just describes that, like, I love the line, disappeared in a cloud, mystique obscenely intact. I don't know yeah. why, but that line just, like, is really pleasing to my yeah, ear. Yeah, man, it gives it gives you another image of just, like, yeah. this godly figure. Yeah. Of someone that he looked up to and, you know, respected. And I, yeah. And I love the Mr. T, T is a hundred feet tall. He's five foot ten. I, I love <laughs> that shit that's too. Good. Yeah. It's very good. And and in the last verse, the way he wraps it up after he's talked about the meeting, um, he wraps up wraps up the last verse saying like all the stuff that Mr. T then went on to do after their encounter, like how he beat cancer and yeah. how he's still on Letterman, saying he's mostly a bodyguard. Yeah. And and how he was like, thank you for the cereal. Like the cereal's righteous. So it, it's just crazy how he turned that whole thing into a whole like four and a half minutes long. Yeah, yeah, it's the opposite opposite of a diss track. Yeah, no, it was a it was a uh, praise track. 
Yeah. It's a tea praise track. It's a glaze track. <laughs> yeah, glaze track. <laughs> um, I hate to just keep talking about like the funny songs because there is serious songs on here too. Yeah. And I'll get to those. But um, By the River and P- Pigeonometry. I like rivers. I like rivers. I like, and then he said something about like not even like the greatest scientist could explain it. I like rivers. He's just like he's just like I like fucking rivers. Yeah. He's hello. he knows what he's about. All right. Yeah, man. It's it's really funny. And he even mentions like in the river song, he's like, oh, you could you might find like a psychopath like dismembering a body, and then he's like, or the weapon used to kill like the aforementioned body or whatever. Yeah. Like he ju- he brings it back. Like I thought that was cool, but. It really just shows like he's an artist, like true to the word, because he can find inspiration from anything. Anything, yeah, yeah, and stretch it into into a full song, yeah. And and by, and again, when you think about the whole technology thing, how the concept of the album is him being weary of technological advancement, like mm-hmm. that's why he play, makes a whole song placing emphasis on, hey, appreciate the fucking rivers in your life, because yeah. we're so engulfed in technology, like, yeah. L- enjoy the river sometimes like yeah. the the river is like nature like it's it's here before and after all this technology like right. um so at least that's the way i took that song and then pigeonometry is awesome because he's just studying them as individual vessels but then he pitches an idea to draw a thousand flock of them mm-hmm. and he's like upset with himself for it because it was too big of a project but he got excited about it yeah. and he only drew <laughs> like six or seven of them and never finished the project yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It's pr- it's pretty relatable too. <laughs> yeah, to not finishing projects or yeah. like yeah, or uh, undertaking like a huge task and thing being exciting about it because it's gonna be really cool. Yeah, when it's done or something, or you'll be really cool with your progress, and then just being overwhelmed by the actual amount of work once you actually have to do it. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, to get into more, some of the more serious songs, I appreciated. Um, Vititis, uh-huh. that's about his grandma, who's from Lithuania, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but just the way he talks about his grandma, like just little simple stuff, like how they would call him, call him Katias and things like that. Just little mm-hmm. details like that. You just get like a personal look into like what his relationship was like with her. And then when she passes away and he gets the phone call. And, like, his first response is, who the fuck's supposed to make the dumplings? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, like, it, it was, it was like, wholesome, but it was funny, but it was sad at the same it's, time. It's like, humanizing, yeah. Yeah, very. So, um, I liked I liked that one a lot. Um, I thought that was cool. I don't think Aesop talks much about his family when he does talk about his family. It's in a humorous sense, like... Mm-hmm. Like well, the, actually, the Mr. T song. Yeah, like the Mr. T song or um, the song Grace off Skeleton. But there is some moments where he talks about like his relationship with his mom and stuff on other albums. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting to just hear him go in depth on a family member in a song, kind of like Blood Sandwich on Impossible Kid, how he talked about his brothers. Mm-hmm. Like it was just cool to hear him have a dedicated song to a family member because um, he doesn't usually get super personal like that. On Failure. That one's awesome too because. Yeah. Yeah, it was I heavily related to Van Gogh. Yeah, um, it was cool format too. He just kind of talked, which he's also a poet, so yeah, um, it makes sense. It's on brand for him, but it's not really something that you see often in albums. Is a spoken word yeah. like? But I think it was good because it made that one stick out more. And I think what he's saying on that song um, is important, especially for. Going into the second song, or the song that follows it, I mean, Solid Gold. Because he's talking about how um, during his life, Vincent Van Gogh was perceived as a failure. Mm -hmm. But he was obviously successful after his death because people appreciated his art. Mm -hmm. Um, But the person who wrote the Wikipedia article is, is basing failure simply on monetary value. Like, Van Gogh wasn't financially successful, therefore he was a failure. And then the song Solid Gold is... Aesop portraying like a thief who just is just basically the same way like just views fi- like how much money you have as success yeah. and so then it begs the question of like is is steal if you're stealing to get the money is that financially successful or are you just a piece of shit basically yeah. and I think he uses that to like scope out to like capitalism at large too mm-hmm. but um I thought it was important for the message of on failure to stick out at that point in the album and i think doing the spoken word was a way 
to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely um plays into the album too is like the definition of, of success now, especially now, has changed with so many like online jobs and stuff and like you could be successful at home. Yeah. Just laying around in your pajamas all day typing yeah. at a computer. Yeah. Whereas Vincent Van Gogh was literally, you know, putting his physicality into his art. Mm -hmm. Like, the probably the less, the least physical thing on the planet to do for a job. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was putting everything into it. Yeah. And he still wasn't successful. Yeah. According to the Wikipedia page. Yeah. Until years later. So, <clears throat> it's interesting to see, you know, the dichotomy of that. Yeah, I, I really liked how those two tracks were next to each other and how they played into each other because there's still a lot on this album that I don't understand, mm -hmm. but that's a part of the album that I definitely felt like I had a grasp on. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt like I wouldn't have picked up on it s as quick if On Failure wasn't spoken word because mm -hmm. I feel like that made the message of that song get get through much easier and made it easier to understand the one that followed it. Mm -hmm. Forward compatibility engine. The one with Rob Sonic. That's the one where he said, Jade, stop this crazy train. I don't know what that one's about. If I'm <laughs> Yeah, I have no clue what that yeah. one's about. Oh, I was just going to say that I um, I kind of had an idea of all these songs a week ago, and then I got sick, and I was just fucking dying, mm. shitting. Yeah, not a good time. Fucking barfing all over the place. So from that first verse, what I kind of take away is like... um. Everyone thinks that they know what's going on, but it's really someone else pulling the strings. Oh, okay. And I think it face is. of a driver in the moment he realized he is ultimately just another passenger. Like he has no control. Yeah. And then waving at the mountain goats and should have hired a Sherpa crowd. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. I think you're on to something there. Yeah. So for the... Uh, when I think about forward compatibility engine, I don't know if this is what he's referring to, but my mind instantly goes to video games uh -huh. and like, well, no, cause I, that's more backwards compatibility. That's not necessarily forward compatibility. Mm. I, um, yeah, I see what, I see what you mean. What, what it means to me is like forward compatibility engine. The only way to move forward is if we have sheep, people who, are willing to give up their morals and stuff to to work yeah to work forward the cause uh -huh. of someone else or something you know what i mean okay and that's the engine is like just finding people who don't care enough for a paycheck or something like that mm -hmm. um i don't know who jane is yeah i <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Jane? I'm not gonna lie. This is one where I'm definitely. That's got to be like it. some reference to something, like some I'm like some show or I, something. I would check my Rap Genius, but my phone's over there, so I I can't. But I do not have Rap Genius downloaded, so chalk it up to one of the songs we don't know. I thought Black Snow was a really cool <laughs> ending to the album. I thought it was cool to hear Nicki Jean because I'm used to hearing Nicki Jean. Beyond some of my favorite tracks on like Lupe Fiasco albums, yeah, um, it was cool to hear her with Aesop. I always think she she does a good job meshing with rappers. I feel like um, and and doing female hooks for rappers. So mm -hmm. it was cool to hear her on the closing track for this one. Um, and this one is it's this that song is caked in metaphor, but in general, um, I think I kind of get the essence of what he's talking about. I don't know fully what he's talking about, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now that I'm like reading in depth here, but um, I kind of got the impression that the black snow in general was just like this general sense of negativity that like is always kind of there and you just kind of have to continue to exist and live life regardless. Like you have to find a way to be at peace with, mm -hmm. What comes down with yeah with what exactly yeah that yeah. was kind of the impression I got from it. Um, this was my least favorite song I think. Okay, just because I'm not really a fan of the the rapping and then the slow sing hook. Okay, it's okay. I just I don't know. It seems played out to me. 
I can see that. Um, I definitely do like it to end the album just because there isn't another song like it. Yeah, on the album that um, was nice. I because if this would have this would have kind of killed momentum for me if it was like in, in the, the middle. middle. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good uh, send off to. It, it, it's 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 a little bit of a signifier when you get to this song that this is probably this is the end. end of the album. Yeah. Um, like I didn't even have to necessarily look at the track list to tell like when it came on at first yeah. that this is probably because it does it does do that it kind of kills all the momentum which um, maybe that's what he was I, trying to do. Yeah, well, I, I, it's definitely meant to be like a slower, more abrupt like uh-huh. stop in the album. Like it's definitely. Mm-hmm. The album is kind of writing the entire time up until this song, so it is like yeah. an abrupt. Like this is the ending. Yeah. The only time you really get something more like soft like that is like Vititis, which is the song right before it. So mm-hmm. it's just kind of a wind down. Mm-hmm. Um, what about Kyanite Toothpick? So I love the beat on that one. Um, it. Maybe because of how much I listened to the album, the hook did kind of get a bit repetitive to me. Yeah, I can see that. Um, but other than that, like it's another song I love. I favorited every song on this album on my Apple Music. So nice. <laughs> I mean, every song on the album I fuck with. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I really like the feature, Billy Woods, or not Billy Woods. Sorry, Hanny L. Khadib. Yeah. He has a good voice. He does have a good voice. <clears throat> I did, but uh, speaking of Billy Woods, I did like Billy Woods on Living Curfew too. Billy Woods has a very unique rhyme style. Um, yeah, it, it really uh, played off Aesop's, I think. He he fits very well with like the Aesop's, the Earl Sweatshirts. Mm-hmm. Um, anytime anytime he's rhyming with like another underground rapper, he he always contributes like a good feature. I need to check out his solo stuff. I haven't done it yet. Yeah. His name sounds like um should be square dancing to it. Billy Woods. Yeah. All City oh. Nerve Map, uh, real quick, is another one I want to say that I'm not entirely sure what he's talking about. I know he's talking about like the nerves like the sewers or whatever. Like the I was thinking the train system. That's what I mean. Yeah. Not the sewers. Um, but the train system. And then he's also talking about like the human nerves, I would assume. I assume it's both of them. Mm-hmm. But but just sonically, um, and hearing Aesop rap, Aesop rap, mm-hmm. um, I really like that song. Oh yes, the drop. I do remember this now. This is the hardest drop of all time. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Boom. yeah. <laughs> when I first heard this, I was like, I got goosebumps. See, he just has so many references that, like, I don't know what he's referencing. Yeah, but it yeah. makes it hard to. He knows so much. I wonder what his IQ is. That'd be pretty high. Yeah. He literally he literally produces his own beats, writes all his own lyrics, and mixes his own songs. And you could I mean, you could certainly like um criticize some of the mixes early on in his career, but at this point he's there's not much you can criticize at all with like Yeah. Anything. Like the lyrics have always been there his whole career. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, the flow has always been there his whole career, even though I think it's gotten better recently. Mm-hmm. I think it's always been there. Um, the beats were always there his whole career, whether it was him or Blockhead, in yeah. my opinion. And then, so it was like, now that the mixing has come along, it's just like, what are you going to nitpick? Like, there's nothing to nit- nitpick with this dude. He's yeah. he's crazy. Seriously. Thank you guys for listening to this episode. Um, yeah, this has been going on a while. It <laughs> has been going on for a uh, while. I could, we what about could, final thoughts? Final thoughts? Final thoughts. This is one of my favorite Aesop rock albums. Um, I definitely think I'd put it top four. Mm -hmm. I don't know where in that four yet, but um, I actually went back and listened to the one that came out in 2020, Spirit World Field Guide. Mm -hmm. Um, I fucking love that one. That's another one of my favorites. Nunshaw Pass and Impossible Kid are are the other two that are like my favorites. I'd say those four are... I put it in the that tier with those ones. Um, I I love everything about this album. This is probably like my second favorite album to come out this year. Yeah, yeah. This is probably my favorite album of the year. Um, just because it was kind of unexpected. Yeah, for me too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, g- great album. Uh, 
Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, yeah. If you see this Aesop, good shit. I've been studying you like religiously for the past like three weeks, <gasps> trying to become a better rapper myself. So I appreciate your art. And as we say at the end of all these, suck my 